Welcome to the July 15th Zoning Advisory Committee meeting. Um, we, I don't think, have a quorum, <laughs> if I'm right. Um, but uh, the agenda tonight was to be the educational uses discussion, which was specifically something Rhea was going to bring some, some uh, items to us, and she is unable to attend tonight. But we certainly could go through the biosafety definition and the um, um, information that um, John sent to us. Just, uh, you know, because I'm sure three of us have all read it. Um, and, but I think it would be an interesting quick discussion. Nothing to vote on tonight, so um, that's, it's really just a matter of you know, discussing that information and seeing if in the next five minutes anyone else shows up. All right, okay? okay. <laughs> Might be a short meeting. All right, so um, John, I'm gonna let you go through this um, high level review of what you found and um, point out any things within the supplementary information that you find most relevant and interesting to us. Take minutes too. <laughs> right. I know. All right. So the biosafety level three is so there are four biosafety levels, and if you guys already know all this, I can just not talk about it. You can you can state it verbally, uh, paraphrase it for the purpose of the listening audience, and. Um, so there are four biosafety levels. Biosafety one is the lowest, biosafety four is the highest, and there are only a few uh, biosafety fours in the country. And basically what the biosafety level um, refers to is the uh, hazard of contamination if the things that they're working on were to be released into the public. So your higher infectious diseases, um, Ebola and that type of thing, are biosafety level four. So level three is one step down from that. Um, and some of the, <clears throat> some of the things, let's pull up the memo, memo. Uh, some of the things that are in biosafety level three that they work on are, I noticed that it's bacteria, parasites, viruses that can cause yep. severe fatal disease yep. so through inhalation routes. SARS, um, Chikungunya, West Nile, um, that type, those types of right. Viruses. So it's, it's pretty, it's pretty high level. Obviously, level four is is extremely bad, like Ebola. You know, um, and level three is still pretty severe. But um, of course, there's specific rules around these and that's why they set up these levels right is, is to say what level of biosafety is necessary for the protection of people who are working in that environment as well as the public and um, surrounding areas so but level one and two they can also work with bacteria and viruses those bacteria and viruses may only be capable of causing mild disease um, but it could be, you know, things like mumps and meals, measles and Lyme disease and so on. Um, but that's hospital, clinical testing, and even high school laboratories can fall into that category. And that's so, currently allowed by right? It's allowed by right, yes. Level one and two labs. And um, the level one and two labs still have to, you know, they have to follow, from their licensing standpoint, they have to follow safety precautions and and um, proper handling of, of blood and and um, other infectious uh, matter so so level three right now in our zoning bylaws we although the wording isn't quite accurate the zoning bylaws do allow it in industrial a definitely i'm not sure about industrial b it allows Biosafety level three by special permit, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Both industrial A and B. A and B, okay. By special permit in both. By special by permit. permit. Yep. Yeah. So, and there's, there's no reason to think that it wouldn't be 
handled appropriately by any business who would want to actually be dealing with that level. It's, it's not something that's used by most biotech companies. You know, it's not necessary for most biotech companies to have a level three. So, um, I personally, I don't see any need to change it to a buy right. I don't think that that actually would make someone more inclined to do business here mm -hmm. by any means because um, I don't think a, a, a company or, or a hospital or whatever working at that level would have any problems with going through a special permitting process. <laughs> That's just you know, my opinion. <coughs> I, th I think it's just one more hurdle they would have to go through. I think it would be a bigger hurdle to get it passed as a by right thing at town meeting than it would be for a individual company to get a special permit for right. it. I think town meeting going for a level three biohazard would be, I think that would be a long debate and would not be well received. No, I don't think it would be well received either. But I, I really don't think it's the right thing to do is to make it a buy right. So I don't think. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the example that we that's been shared, town of Lexington ha has to have a special committee uh, organized to take uh, do another round of reviews and all that stuff. It just seems more hassle than. Yeah. I also don't think that you know that's you know no shade against uh, Lexington, but I, I just don't think that that at a town level that that makes any sense because the level of expertise you can you can get in a group at a town level for that you know we've pretty much using up all of the the experts in our board of health um, <laughs> and uh yeah that would be very difficult to go through those types of reviews well that was my problem when i read it i'm going yeah okay you know i don't i don't know enough about the subject to to make a legitimate educated comment on. So is it okay or not? I don't know. I have no idea. I would definitely even, you know, if there were a company to come in and ask for a level three biosafety, I would, uh, I would, you know, be questioning them a lot <laughs> on what they were doing. So, yeah. Okay, so um, before you had a chance to come in, um, Ted, we were talking about how Rhea was not able to make it tonight, and um, she was going to bring forward the thoughts on the specific educational use. Oh, I thought you were going to mention garbage agenda, cans. Agenda, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and, and uh, I don't think we have a quorum to vote on anything tonight, so we just thought we'd go through the biosafety and, okay. and then um, see who else. I, I apologize for being a That's little late. Right. I took longer at Bill's to make my sandwich than I anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> but I ate it quickly. Um, anything else in the supplemental materials that you, you gave us that you would, you know, not necessarily related to biosafety level, but anything else that you wanted to point out or talk about? I thought that the Bio-ready community, which starts at the bottom of page 25 and goes into page 26. Bio-ready community, Mass Biotech Council. Um, it's some sort of um, bio-ready, you know, obviously, is just some sort of ranking level that they give to communities. Um, based on the criteria listed mostly on page 26 of our packet. Um, and I think that if Hopkinton is not listed right now, we certainly ought to be, because it should be, it's a fairly, fairly simple thing to be on that list, um, even at the bronze level, which is one, municipal water and sewer available in commercial and industrial areas. That might be something that we're not. <laughs> we need to check that. And the zoning is allowed for biotech and lab and manufacturing uses by special permit. We're actually allowed by right. 
and identified point of contact in a town hall to assist biotech projects, which is true. We just, you know, we might need to point it out as like, yes, see here. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it, because right now it's probably just says for business projects in general. And, you know, if we need to highlight biotech specifically, um, uh, in order to get this, it, it seems like a no-brainer because it means we would exist on lists, Mass Biotech Council, and possibly be on a shorter list of communities um, that companies, you know, that are searching for a place to be. So Hopkinton, Hopkinton is a gold community. <laughs> See, we're already on there. <laughs> That's great. So it says, Let's see, we're gold. Pre permit. Is there platinum? There is there a platinum. Is. Same yeah, with platinum. platinum. There's a platinum. And uh, local communities on the platinum look like to, to be Framingham, Franklin, Marlboro. Westboro, Worcester. Family. Mm-hmm. Okay. In thinking back, I think there was some concern about that use and the, the amount of water required for it. And yeah, it varies a lot in biotech. But I think that's gotten that's a lot better over the years. The platinum level requirements do not seem onerous. Board of Health requirements. I'm, um, I assume you don't all have this right in front of you, but um, it says obviously the gold criteria plus these extra things. The municipality's Board of Health has adopted the NIH's guidelines on RDNA activity as part of its regulations. That should be fairly straightforward. Obviously, they need to review it. Do you know if we've done that, John? And I don't I know. Don't. Yeah. And municipality includes a building or buildings that are already permitted for biotech uses. Which yes. we have. And have 20,000 square feet or more of available space for biotech uses. I don't know what they mean <coughs> if they mean available space is in not rented or if they mean it's just not. there and it's either being used for biotech uses or could be. I'm not sure what that means. I, be I believe it would probably mean that it's not currently being used. Not currently being used. Okay. But that's just a guess. So the only thing that we would need to do is check with the Board of Health. Yeah, I think so. Because I think we have the space. So the other the other option is municipality has a shovel ready pre permitted land site with completed MEPO review and municipal water and sewer capacity to meet additional demand. If not, that other one. The municipality includes a building or buildings that are already permitted for biotech uses and have twenty thousand square feet or more available space. So maybe we should look at, uh, is there water and sewer on, on the street. professional office? Uh, I, I would assume for professional office, but I, I don't know for sure. Well, that's a good question. Because mm -hmm. we might want to look at that as a, an acceptable use for over there, too. Although I think labs are already in there, are they not? I believe so. But not specifically level one and two and three by permit biohazards. Um, not, yeah, it's not specifically BSF three, but genetic, biological, and chemical research centers, laboratories, and manufacturing and processing plants is allowed by special permit. So maybe we want to add level one and two and three by special permit in that zone. When I get you the other stuff that I'm supposed to get you on that zone. <laughs> okay. So we'll check out what, whether or not water sewer, town water sewer is on professional office, town water sewer um, with the available capacity is in industrial A and B. I think it is for part of the, part of the areas. <coughs> I remember from a previous discussion, but not all of them. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear you. Town water sewer with, with extra capacity in industrial A and B. I am probably speaking out, I'm not entirely sure how it works, but I think whenever you bring a use in, you have to go before DPW and ask for the capacity. But I'm not sure, and, and maybe John knows. 
Do you know, John? I, I think they need a tie-in permit, and maybe they go through that whole process of determining capacity, but I'm not 100% sure. So is that something that you do before you, like would you go through that process before you even acquired a building, or um, is that an I after? think you basically talk to DPW before you have a building, okay. and say, this what, is what I want to do. Know, you, you go through the motions to figure it out, and then I honestly don't know. I can talk to DPW and figure out what the whole process is to determine that. They usually have already figured that out when they come to me. Okay. I've added to the action item list. So, so all of these things are related to platinum level bio ready rating from Mass Biotech Council. And and of course, related to our efforts to look for a new user for professional office district. Um, so, uh, so the Board of Health, um, and I'll, you know, I, I'll look into this more, the NIH guidelines on our DNA activity. Um, and asked to put that on their agenda at some point. Um, town sewer, you, town water and sewer, you can check um, the availability of those. Right? Okay. And we do what, what you said that we do want to add the, that we are allowing level one and level two in professional office because right now there is no, it's only in industrial A and B where we talk about level one, level two, level three. In professional office, there is no mention of it. Only in special permit it says genetic, biological, and chemical research center with no distinction. So maybe making it more Rhea, obvious. Rhea and I have been um, sitting with John to try and, and develop a use list that will work for professional, professional office. And when we get that language all squared away and when I actually give John what I promised him I would deliver, uh, we'll bring that back. and. So yeah, I think you've made a note to add that to, to the uses. Mm -hmm. Now, um, that is a good segue to you know our next meeting in August. Is this something, the professional office, the wording of that, is that something that it makes sense to put on for August? I, I will make a point to get it done. You can okay. put it on in August. Okay. And, um, and let's also double check that Rhea is gonna be available for that August meeting. I can email her about that. Um, so that's, let's see. Um, I forgot to get my glasses out, so I'm just zooming in. <laughs> okay. Um, so that would be a good one for, uh, again, the professional office district. Ria to, um, she was gonna bring us a list of the um, educational uses specifically um, that professional office discussion. And then there was what you were working on. I can't find the it on the action item list, but I know it's here. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Draft potential changes to professional office district zoning bylaw. Um, John, Cotino was going to explore the potential for a site walk for professional office district. I'll email him about that, see what can be done. Um, possibly not before our August meeting, but. When is the meeting in August? It is. The 5th. The 5th? I believe so. Okay. Yes, it is. August 5th. Okay, so that leaves one, two, three weeks or two and a half weeks to get that stuff done. That's a reasonable action item, right? It'll happen. And then, John, you can check on town water and sewer before that meeting as well. And, no, oh, that's good, okay. I think that was it for professional office districts. So we'll put those back on the agenda for next time. So I'm going to put that down for 8-5. Eight, 8-5. Five. Eight, five. And eight, five. Good. Good. Now, other items on the action item list. Um, 
I'm just looking for somebody to potentially say, yes, I can get that done before two and a half weeks from now. <laughs> so what I want to do, as, as I've said before, is not have things on our agenda that we haven't done the research for yet. So we actually have some background material to discuss, not just, you know, I, you know, I think everyone's opinions are wonderful, but I think that that's not what we're here for, is just our opinions. So, okay, so there was solar farm overlay. Ted, I think that was you. That's something I discovered. Okay, is that something that you could research in the next two and a half weeks and be sure, satisfied to? Sure, Weston okay. and Wellesley have done. Okay, and then if you can even summarize I don't know the. I where to go for legal advice, but I can, <laughs> I can look into how they created their overlays and whether it's created problems okay. or successes. Okay, that sounds great. So I think that that would be a good um, second agenda item for August 5th. And um, and anyone else should feel free to like do internet searches and so on. Any other research to supplement either of those topics that you think would help us? Make sense of things. The professional yeah. office and the solar bylaw hmm? are the two topics. The, the solar, office yeah. And the solar, solar overlay, yeah. So good. So really, what we're trying to think about doing with solar solar farm overlay, if we can get away with it legally, is encourage certain parcels over other parcels. And it, that was the wording I saw in Wellesley. Some so. sort of we really want solar here yeah <laughs> and you know it may not do any good but uh, that's what we're looking into right, right, right. that's what we're looking into okay okay good so thank you so much for the um, for the research on the biosafety level and I think that um, that it's good to know about the um, <coughs> the BioReady ratings from Mass Biotech Council. I still have some research to do with Mass Biotech Council and Mass Bio um, in terms of you know other ways to encourage biotech businesses. And um, you know, there's there's things that can be done, I'm sure. So so we can continue to work on that one. And um, did everyone have a chance to review minutes? Yes, but we can't vote on them. We can't vote on them, can we? May I ask a question about them? Not to change the minutes, because mm -hmm. I wasn't here anyway. Uh, I was just flipping through the minutes, and um, Ron said, it's reflected in the minutes, that Ron said, the more profitable a business, the more tax revenue we get. And then the minutes say, a discussion followed. Can I get filled in on what that discussion was? Because I didn't understand that to be it true. Was, it was more of you may have said is that really how it works and he kind of explained in general well he, he said if it if a business prospers the value of the real estate increases is my recollection I don't think that's what he was saying no? I, was, <laughs> I thought he was saying if a business he said the was, assessors the assessors have a discretion to use business revenue for tax basis or the real estate, the value of the real estate for the tax. That's what he said. I wrote it down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because and, this and is I actually, I read the minutes and I wanted to ask him for clarification because whether a business does well or not, you, you collect taxes exactly. on yeah. their assessed value. Right, that's what I thought to be but true. But according to Ron, there, there is some variation to that and I don't know to what extent we're using it yeah. in town. I, I think he was saying we don't use it. They just have the ability to use. It. Oh, assessors have the discretion to use it. But he said he said that I didn't I didn't I hear that. He said it, we don't. He, I thought he said we don't use it currently. But I. Well, I think we should put that back on the agenda because I I also read the minutes and would like so clarification on how that. The great thing is each cam records it. Works. So you can just go back and watch it. Oh, so I can go back. It's, it's it's difficult to type and talk. Okay. Oh yeah. You so can't timestamp the minutes as well for us, John? <laughs> so, <laughs> so try and get general discussions and then... 
No, 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 no. I'm. I, I wasn't critical. Of sometimes, I was no. I appreciate the way you say. And a discussion ensued. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's where we all went. Huh? Can you explain it? <laughs> but I, I left the discussions in sort of a, a state of really. Yeah, I know. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's not what I've heard more before. More questions than I came into it with. We've talked about it a lot at planning board, and we have never discussed that. Because I know on on manufacturing facilities, there's a tax value associated with the equipment that's in the in the building. Yeah. And you get tax value for that, and you get tax value for computers and stuff. But if you just have an empty building doing whatever it's doing, I didn't think there was any variation. Yep, I but that, that was my understanding too. And when I spoke at town meeting about car washes and storage, that's part of what I was working on. The assumption that it, we're not taxing profits, we're taxing property value. No, oh, he, I, but he did say revenue, not profits. Um, I, I think it said something like, if it's profitable. Yeah, he on. did say if it's <laughs> profitable, but but um, yeah, but then he, but I wrote down exactly that statement that was related to revenue. You know who might be a good resource for that is is Mary Jo Lufrenier. Yeah. Who's worked in the assessor's office for we forever. Definitely so I could, I could reach out to her and ask assessors. her how that, that would works. That would be great. No, the line of discussion last week was because we were talking about hours and it came up to like, does it, if, just because they stay open longer, what, what, what does the town gain? Mm -hmm. and so that's when mm -hmm. he said, if they get more revenue, we get more taxes. And right. That's yeah. How it, yeah. So it's that, you know, I don't know if she would be willing to come on August 5th. I will ask her. Okay. Because we her. could, you know, we could gear the agenda around when she, when she is here, when she's able to be here, um, in order to delve into that a little bit more. That would be great. That, I think that would be a worthwhile discussion. So yeah. I will see if she can make it on August 5th to tell us how okay. taxes are assessed. Okay. So we're not going to vote on the minutes tonight, but um, I did look them over and they looked fine to me. So next time we should be able to vote them in. Okay. And um, obviously not voting on anything else tonight, but we do have our agenda for next time. Please, please do put the um, tax assessment details or something like that on the tentative agenda for next time too. And other than that, I think we can call it a night. I, I have we a- vote to adjourn. <laughs> I have a question have about- a so we can't. <laughs> Our, our new <laughs> Zach, when, yes. when does the term end? Okay, so we were just and, talking and what about our this next step? <laughs> before we started the, before we started the um, uh, broadcast, we start, oh, discussed this too. Um, we all need to, not all of us, anyone who's on a longer than one year term. I can tell you right now. Who does not, I don't even know what Does not need is. to apply again. So it is <clears throat> Ted, Mary, Peggy Shaw, John Catino, Rhea, and Ron. Those okay. are two years? No, are, we oh, no, we are all on one-year terms, okay. either as liaison positions right. or as at-large members. And so we need to reapply by the end of uh, August. And in September, we'll double-check that, but in, in a September meeting, probably early September meeting, the planning board will reappoint, you know, new members obviously will be, they'll also be advertising for new at-large members um, because we still have open seats that can be, you know, we can have more people. So How many meetings do we have planned in August? One or two? One in August. So is that the last officially with this committee with, before there could be reshuffling? Because the terms expire August 31st. August 31st, okay. Um, I, think, um, I think that's good, fine. Um, the reason I ask is, um, I think an easy item that I, I heard at town meeting the town wants is the eliminate car washes from downtown business. Mm -hmm. um, but I think probably you don't want it straddling the committee if there's a change in membership. I, I suggest that maybe it be one of the first items once the next term starts okay. and knock that September. out and, and say, Get here, we've done something. and yeah. Okay, Just because I, I, I think we all heard loudly at town meeting that that's really what people want. Yep, that makes sense. At least one gentleman in a loud voice who I found very entertaining. <laughs> I liked him. <laughs> anyway, that was my No, point. that's a good idea. I agree. Okay. So, shall we adjourn? Sure. So be it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Opposed? Abstentions?